So in order to um, make sure that we we delivered uh, a we, de we delivered a vision, as I said, that, was that, that we would be able to put together. We decided to divide what was an incredibly complex and large area into five what we called productive places. So the City Ribbon, the Inner Estuary, South Essex Foreshore and North Kent Foreshore and the River Thames. And out of those five productive places, we chose three um, three of those priority projects uh, in order that each one of those places uh, uh, would have a, a proper focus on them. And it's not to say that all of those five productive places don't, uh, aren't integrated, they don't collaborate between each other, or that they aren't around existing uh, boundaries. In fact, it's quite, it's quite the opposite. We tried very hard to make sure that we uh, allocated resources uh, to what we saw with those, uh, uh, to those five areas. So if you look at the city ribbon vision, that, uh, those three projects that we, um, that we chose there were three new Thames crossings, uh, an integrated skills strategy and, and an accelerated delivery pilot. So we believe that in order to make sure that the uh, mayor's uh, planning 2050 um, infrastructure plan was put together, that this is something that we felt that was needed. But those Thames crossings are absolutely crucial to connect, uh, to, to connect both north and, uh, and south of the river. In our estuary vision, um, this is uh, very much a part of how, how do we um, build on the work, build on the skills that are already there, work with existing, um, work with the existing universities and, uh, and education facilities to make sure that we um, really highlight the skills and opportunities that, that there are in, in those areas and the extension of Crossrail 1 is something that we've been pushing the government to do in order to really unlock the growth and opportunities in the whole of that area. Thank you. Next one. South Essex foreshore. Um, I think that one of the one of the many really interesting ideas that have, have that came out uh, of uh, of the call for ideas was the was this idea for the Institute of Resilience Infrastructure. So, how do we look forward? How do we think about the uh, big issues that are coming, um, you know, in terms of climate change and and uh, and uh, and flooding and various other things that the, the, the Thames Estuary really does? As, as I said before in my opening. Um, speak in, in my opening notes. Uh, it, it is one. It is the place. It is the area that will um, make sure that we it has the opportunity to make sure that there is uh, there is no uh, no flooding in in, in long in the long term. So, uh, an institute for Brazilian infrastructure. The moving the South Essex College. So relocation the South Essex College, which is, has already happened, which is really exciting, and again another foreshore fund, another fund that uh, these areas can um, uh, can access in order to um, build upon some of the work that's already going on. Next, please. North Kent foreshore health mm -hmm. super centre. Uh, again, one of the things that the uh, Thames Estuary uh, area and uh, particularly North Kent is good at is, uh, is primary care and we wanted to build on that education and skills and uh, North, uh, North Kent Foreshore Fund in the same way that we had uh, one for the uh, South Essex. And the River Thames, it is, it is the heart of the Thames uh, estuary and it is something that is and continues to be underutilised. A great Thames park, uh, we believe that if you, if you connect all those places and spaces around and enhance the quality of uh, the green spaces around the, uh, the, the, the Thames, that this will uh, encourage what is already an extraordinary cultural and uh, and uh, uh, cultural and mm, tourist, that's what I'm thinking about, uh, and, and the extraordinary tourism that it could bring. Thames East Line, um, we believe that it isn't just one mode of transport, but it should be two. 
and the extraordinary work that's already being done in relation to uh, celebrating the Thames and the work around, again, the cultural uh, and creative uh, industries. So those priorities, we believe, if they are delivered together, if they are coordinated properly, and if they begin to join together in a way that is given impetus, and we've tried to focus our thinking, we've tried to focus our energies on those 15 priorities. That's not to say that there are many others uh, that we think are worthwhile and necessary, but we believe that if we're able to connect the dots, we believe if we're able to encourage and facilitate those things that are already happening, then there will be a kind of combined momentum and energy that will, will, that will bring it forward. So how do we do that? Well, one of the things that we do is not only prioritise, but we also say, what can you do quickly? What, what are the quick wins? How can we make sure that in order to deliver it and to encourage that these, that, that what are the, what are those, out of those 15 <coughs> choices, um, can we do quickly? What are those things that we can do? Next slide, please. Next slide. Oh, is there no next slide? Oh. Uh, what can we do in the short term? Uh, what can we do in the medium term? Next slide, please. And what are the long-term goals uh, of the Thames Estuary? And how do we do that? Well, we do that by thinking hard. We do that by collaboration and we do that by proper governance and that is a big challenge. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, one of the big and most complex issues is how to make sure that local authorities and unitary authorities talk to each other and do so in a way that is uh, coordinated and delivers on a cohesive vision. And we have some ideas about how that might look like. We have some ideas about what good governance may be in the estuary, but we have asked uh, local leaders, local stakeholders, to think about for themselves what that looks like and come back to government with a proposal uh, within the next six to 12 months uh, in order that they can deliver uh, the vision that we have uh, that we have put down, and it's it's not going to be easy. But I think if there is anywhere uh, in the country that really has the kind of opportunities and extraordinary uh, potential to uh, add to our uh, add to the economy in a, in a really constructive way, then it's the Thames Estuary. Just coming here. Today, seeing the extraordinary uh, re rejuvenation that can happen if communities are properly connected, if uh, you work bottom up, if you take the, for instance, the creative arts cultural sector that really is uh, driving uh, much of the regeneration in this area, then it's, and it's, and it's an extraordinary and exciting prospect.